This is Kid Nate at BloodyElbow.com. I'm back again. Hola, Kid Nate. God damn it. Hola, Cage Fighting Connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate at BloodyElbow.com. Google continues to screw with me. They're ringing the bell multiple times. I have no idea when the show starts, so forgive the less than crisp catchphrase. I'm back with the UFC one Fight Night 27 bathrobe review. Condit versus Campman. Excellent review. Got to do one thing right quick before Google shuts me down. Got to send myself the embed code for the broadcast so I can po post it on Bloody Elbow later. And now we can start. Forgive me, uh, YouTube and Google and their wisdom only let you see the embed code while the show is broadcasted and as soon as you're through, the embed code disappears. So anyway, let's talk about the fights. <clears throat> Excellent night of fights. I'd give it four stars easy as an event. As an experience, I'd give it two stars. It was a nightmare. The fucking cable companies cannot get it straight. <clears throat> My cable provider says they have Fox Sports, Sports 2. It's, it's showing some sort of preview instead of the live fight. So then I had to run around for a stream. Crazy making. Crazy making. The only good, the only good news is that Fox Sports 1's ratings are so bad that the UFC is in the catbird seat and has become an incredibly valuable property for Fox Sports 1, which is good for MMA fans, it's good for the UFC. Uh, uh, the business realities of it is that live TV sports broadcasting is the most valuable property to advertisers because it's DVR proof. Uh, Fox Sports 1 has basically very little else to offer. It's got college football coming up in a, in a, a month or so, but at the moment, the UFC is the only game in town. It's going to continue to be one of the Fox Sports 1's strongest draws. Uh, they've got a lot invested in making this succeed. It's a very, it's an enormous effort to try to take on ESPN. Right now, they're, they're not even getting past CBS's cable sports offering or NBC Sports and their cable package, formerly the Versus Channel. So anyway, I'm sure a lot of you are going through the, stuff, the pains of trying to find uh, the UFC on your cable dial as well, and uh, my condolences, and uh, just be known that Kid Nate is right there with you. But let's talk about the fights. Uh, we got Roger Bowling versus Abel Trujillo up first in the Facebook cards. I would give this one, I mean, it was shaping up to be a four, four and a half, even a five-star fight. It was back and forth. These guys were coming at each other. Bowling and Trujillo both were just bringing the aggression. Uh, Bowling was really going for the kill in the second round, and then suddenly, boom, Trujillo reverses. Hurts him. I agree with Dana White. I don't believe the knees, either of the knees were illegal. I think they both landed on the chest. One of the thighs, though, did hit uh, Bowling in the chin, but it was the punch that really finished him. The whole thing uh, was a botch. Uh, the referee, Rob Hines, who I believe makes some sort of bizarre gesture, like, oh, when, when they announce his name or something, oh, it's, it's annoying, and, and his refing is, is uh, showing it. Um, I also want to mention there's another ref in, in Indianapolis last night. I didn't catch his name, but the dude is a beefed up, roided out little guy, and it's really funny looking. But that's that's neither here nor there. My apologies if you're watching ref and you're offended. Next time I'll know your name. Anyway, Roger Ball and Abel Trujillo, if you're going to call the fight due to what you believe are illegal shots, that should be a disqualification, not a no contest. Otherwise... What's stopping a fighter from just, you know, if you're losing a fight badly, throw some illegal knees to the face, you get the chance, and it's declared a no contest, and, and it's better than the loss. That's just, it makes no sense. If you're going to stop a fight because of an illegal blow, that's a DQ. Should have been a bowling win, although in reality it should have been a Trujillo win. So a complete botch from the refs, but great performance from both fighters. Looking forward to seeing it again. Roger Bolin in his post-fight interview seemed pissed about the knees. He's convinced they're illegal. We'll see. Abel Trujillo uh, supposedly got all his win bonuses from the UFC, just as if he had won. So we'll see. A great performance from both guys, though, i got to say. Up next, Zach Cummings uh, demolished Ben Alloway. I'd give this one three stars uh, just because it was so one-sided. Um, <coughs> really uh, impressive performance from Cummings. I mean, it wasn't utterly one-sided, but Alloway didn't do a heck of a lot. And Cummings really showed... Uh, some game. A very impressive Darce Choke uh, front headlock game. I think that's something you're going to see more and more of as wrestlers learn submissions. Um, 
good performance from Cummings. I look forward to seeing more from him in the welterweight division. Very impressive for UFC newcomer, I have to say. Uh, and, well, and then uh, uh, on the Fox Sports 2 card, this is the one I had to... The Jason I fight is the one I had to go back and watch later because I swear I have Fox Sports 2. My cable provider tells me that I have Fox Sports 2, and I tuned in at the right time, and it said, you're about to witness the most exciting sports event, and I thought, all right, and then... The fight happens, and I don't see it because Ariel Hawani is talking to Karen Barker, Karen uh, Bryant about something, and it's just, uh, you know. Anyway, just crazy making. I don't know what the deal is. Calling my cable company today and seeing if they can sort that out. But going back and watching it, Jason High, uh, three-star fight, one-sided performance. He just he just smoked uh, James Head. Uh, glad to see High back in the win column. Love the Casey Bandit, uh, a friend of B Bloody Elbows on Twitter. One of the smartest guys in the fight game. Uh, you know, last time out he got smoked by Eric Silva. He wants to rematch against Silva. I don't know if that's a good idea. I think I think High should uh, get his feet under him in the UFC a little bit longer. Uh, but good performance from him. Quick, painless submission. Very slick. Um, that brings us to Darren Elkins and Hatser Aoki. Oh, a heartbreaker. This was a heartbreaker. I mean, Aoki had it. He was dominating the fight. Uh, you know, nothing against Darren Elkins. He's a, a fine fighter. Seems like a fine guy. But Hayoki, you know, is like one of the last men standing from Japanese MMA. Somebody that we had high hopes for coming into the UFC featherweight division. And he just does not make the right tactical decisions to win in the UFC. He's got all the skills he needs, but with the judging in the U.S., you cannot spend any time on your back. And in the, in the first round, he hurt Elkins with kicks to the body. And he made what seemed like a smart decision at the time to go on the ground and finish it. Elkins is too good a grappler for that. If you're hurting him on the feet, stay on the feet and keep hurting him. But instead, Hioki let that opportunity slip through his fingers, and then in the third round, Elkins took him down, and Hayoki was content to lay on his back and guard. I know that you know it's not like Elkins is easy to get off of you, but if Hioki had been training to cage crawl and to get away from... Uh, being mounted or from having guys to get away from bottom position instead of working on offense from the guard, which is just a dead path in the UFC these days, unfortunately, because of the judging. You gotta you gotta be prepared to get off your back, not fight off your back. Get off your back. Hioki blew it. Elkins got the decision. Might be it for Hioki in the UFC. We'll see. Overall, I, I'd give that. That was one of the slower fights of the night. Um, I'd give it. I'd give it three stars, though. Uh, solid performance, you know. Solid performance from both guys. Two skilled fighters. Some really slick grappling exchanges too. Uh, uh, some really slick stuff. Some very nice reversals and 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 defensive moves that were pretty subtle. But um, Elkins Elkins put on a heck of a performance to to beat Hayoki. Up next, welterweight Brandon Thatch and Justin Edwards. Damn! I give this one four stars. Brandon Thatch knockout of the night. Just destroyed. Justin Edwards, um, just amazing. Thatch is a big welterweight. Uh, Edwards was kind of iffy, I think, as, at the UFC caliber. Most of his opponents have washed out of the UFC, uh, but impressive from Thatch. Uh, still not sure he's for real. Uh, I mean, he's for real as a fighter. Is he for real UFC caliber? I don't know. I'd like to see him going up against somebody really formidable next time. Maybe even Jason Hyde. That might be an interesting fight. Um, Apologies, Jason. I'm, I'm sure you're probably not wanting to fight Brandon Thatch, uh, right? But uh, the kid looks pretty tough at the moment. Anyway, I'd give that one four stars. Exciting new talent in the UFC welterweight division in Brandon Thatch. Colin Anders, Poppy Betty. Um, I, you know, I'd give it. I'd give it a, a three stars. It was. It was a sort of a frustrating scrap. I, I've never been on the Poppy Betty bandwagon, but. Clearly, he's not developed into a UFC caliber fighter. They, they've kept around, I think, a little longer than they would in most cases because he's Swedish. Uh, he's he's got most of the tools. He's got a good judo game. He's got some punches. Can't throw combinations though. Just one punch at a time. His grappling on the ground isn't very good, and his defensive his takedown defense isn't all that good. So very limited fighter. And Dylan Andrews managed to beat him with one hand, basically, because because he hurt his shoulder early on in the fight, getting thrown. And uh, impressive performance from Andrews, but not not somebody I think is going to be a major talent. And I think Abedi is done in the UFC. So uh, there you go, three stars for that fight. And that brings us to the main Fox Sports One card. Uh, again, I don't have Fox Sports One at home. Had to go to a friend's house who's got a different cable offering. 
catch that. Made for a hectic evening of trying to cover the fights, running around town, and the 15 minutes we have between fights. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm sure other people have it worse. So, and life. But middleweight Brad Tavares versus Bubba McDaniel. I thought this was the weakest fight on the card. I'd give it two stars. Tavares is one of these guys. He's he he clearly had McDaniel uh, outskilled. But he just doesn't bring the aggression, and and he let McDaniel off the hook, and McDaniel almost came back. Actually, I'm going to give this three stars because it was a pretty good fight watching McDaniel come back and and almost win. You know, he really had a lot of will. Childress, Texas, own used to drive through Childress all the time on my way from hell back to Austin. Grew up in the Texas Panhandle, and uh, Childress is on the route, uh, godforsaken place. So Bubba is the kind of tough tough guy that comes out of a place like Childress. But he couldn't beat the Hawaiian tough with Brad Tavares, and and uh, just frustrating. Tavares is somebody that if he could just put it pedal to the metal, I think could be a real factor. He's got the skill set. But I don't know that you can teach aggression. Zane Simon and I were talking about it last night, and Zane, uh, you know, gave me that idea that you just can't teach aggression. And I, uh, I don't know what Tavares's future is. Uh, up next, Bantamweight's uh, Takeya Mizugaki beat Eric Perez. Uh, another three-rounder, I'd give it three stars. Good back-and-forth fight. Lots of inside-the-telephone-booth action. Mizugaki's trademark style. Lots of brutal punch exchanges. Prez has a lot of heart. I don't think he has the skill to live up to the hype the UFC is trying to put behind him as one of their few Mexican uh, fighters, um, that, that, and they're desperate for the Mexican market. But I don't think Prez is going to be the guy. Um, Mizugaki, uh, one of the last uh, guys keeping the, the, the flag of Japanese MMA, WEC and the UFC so long, it's hardly like he's a representative of Japanese MMA, which doesn't really exist anymore, frankly. Um, but good to see him in there, still winning. Uh, split decision, because the judges never know how to score a Mizugaki fight, but I'm thankful the right guy won. That brings us to Court McGee versus Robert Whitaker. Uh, McGee took the decision. I had it for Whitaker. I thought he outscored him. It was a, it was a tough fight to score, back and forth, pretty even. Uh, another one of these fights where Whitaker had a definite skill advantage on the feet, kind of let McGee off the hook. McGee is tough as hell, gets you inside in the Randy Couture range, and really will beat you up. And and uh, I, I I I I have to. Um, I'd give that one three stars again. It was, a, it was another one of those three round fights. Good fight, nothing nothing spectacular. Um, good performance from both guys. Uh, kind of disagree with the decision. That brings us to Kevin Gaslam versus Brian Melanson. Um, Melanson was perfect for this fight, a perfect opponent for a young guy like Gastelum that we're not sure about. He's a tough puncher, doesn't have a whole lot else to offer. Gastelum showed he can handle that. I mean, he handled it. Whew, boy, did he handle it. He hurt him on the feet. Immediately took him down and got the rear neck and choke. That's what mixed martial arts is about. Gastelum is somebody I think is a legit prospect. I don't think he's a legit championship prospect, but I think he's somebody who could become a UFC perennial if he plays his cards right. So I'd give that fight four stars. Excellent performance from Gastelum. Uh, amazing contrast with Uriah Hall, uh, his ultimate fight rival. All right, that brings us to Rafael Dos Anjos versus Donald Cerrone in the coming event. This is a big boy fight. This is a four star fight. Uh, Maybe three and a half. It kind of it kind of slacked off in the third round. I think I think Dos Anjos could have done just a tiny bit more, but I think he coasted a little bit once he felt like he had the fight in the bag. Impressive performance from Dos Anjos. Beating Sharoni shows that he can handle contenders in the UFC. Might get a title run for Dos Anjos out of this. Cerrone, I think his title hopes are over, but I think he's got a long career in front of him as a UFC banger. He's somebody who brings action, uh, good gatekeeper, tough as shit, very skilled athlete. Uh, I was impressed that, that Dos Anjos was able to control the range, control the distance, landed a lot of hooks. I was surprised by that. I think Cerrone's another one of these guys, fairly lanky, doesn't have the jab, to control range like ideally he would. Easier said than done, I know. I give it four stars, though. Excellent fight. And that brings us to the main event, Carlos Condit versus Martin Campman. Five fucking stars. Carlos Condit is a man. This dude is a badass. And it just makes it all the more frustrating that, that he fought such a strategic fight against Nick Diaz. I would love to see Condit and Diaz just go to war. Uh, but... You know, Condit did what he had to do in that fight, and he certainly did what he had to do against Campman. Campman came out and dominated the wrestling early. Had a lot of people, friends of mine, uh, Luke Thomas was was I and me, uh, just frustrated with Condit and, and referring to him as a very limited fighter because of his his poor defensive wrestling. But 
he got Campman tired and turned it around. Campman wasn't able to take him down anymore, and then the beating began, and he just finally wore him down and finished him in the fourth round. Just an excellent performance, excellent display of will and heart and savagery. Condit has a real desire to hurt his opponents that is, you know, this is combat sports, folks. This is what it's all about. Con Adios MMA aficionados.